Oh, you, I can't. You have to give me permission. Okay. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, there's people here. But, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, good. No, sorry, I got that. I got uh, one of your hairs in my teeth. Oh, we're doing the same joke again, right? No, it's not the same joke. This is for the first time. Oh, okay. Great. Right. Um, okay, well, anyway. well, I've got a recording to prove it, and I'm going to play. Oh, it's all great. Oh, just as smooth as always. Well, we are so pros at this. <laughs> well, welcome everybody to our annual "I Hate You, Man" Valentine's Day special. Yes, where... and, and just in case, just in case something happens again, and I do have to stitch this together. Uh, I do seem to be ha having slight tech issues, so just in case it sounds weird, that's that's why. Yeah, because uh, it'll it'll be a departure from our usual um smooth a, 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 a smooth uh, professional quality yeah. sound. So hey, that's a good idea, Ron. Let's let's just blame the whole thing from the beginning on technical. Right. Well, of course it was, of course, yeah. right down yeah. to right down down to our stupidity. Right. So it's a shame yeah. if you couldn't uh, get stupid the full... The full versions of every episode were just sublime yeah. and full of, of fantastic course. insights and yeah, yeah, yeah. and but yeah. we lost it all. All that was left was our stupid ramblings. And, yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's a shame, really. It's amazing it's the chances of it happening every single time as well. Yeah, it's just it's, it's like it knows somehow. Yeah. yeah. Sent anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, as I was saying, this is our uh, our annual "I Hate You, Man" Valentine's Day special, where mm. Clive and I, uh, of course, we spend the entire year. Uh, of Clive making me watch movies that I will hate, that I generally hate. But this is the one where he chooses a movie specifically because I will, he thinks I will hate it, rather than just hoping that I'll hate it. Right? So... Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, and of so, course, you have the same... Of course, and I, I and I get the, finally the chance to retaliate by also making Clive watch a movie, which I'm usually fairly certain that he will hate as well. Right. And But, the, but, but we should, uh, you know, we should say uh, th there are rules you can't yeah. just choose. It has to be a film that you honestly like. Actually like, yes. Which I can't believe Ron does this time, but, but apparently does. <laughs> and to inflict on the other person. So you can't just choose any old rubbish. That's yeah, you can't just be a movie. It's got to be a movie that you actually like, but that you know the other person will also hate. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyway, so let's kick it off. So I, I, I think I got a, a real uh, showstopper this year. Uh, blow, blow, I, blow, I, blow. I, I knew you were gonna love <laughs> love slash hate, uh, which was the uh, the nineteen ninety two classic Encino Man. <laughs> right. Encino, classic, your Encino your Man. definition of a classic is obviously quite different from mine, but uh... <laughs> well, I, I think a lot of people actually would consider this a classic. No, uh, they wouldn't. But oh. yeah, yes, it is. I've seen this on many. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I've seen this on many uh, a nineties comedy list for. Uh, this movie actually has a lot of fans behind it, so you might be surprised. So uh, I am, yeah, I am surprised. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, 1992, uh, starring uh, Sean Astin, Brendan Fraser, Holly Shore, and uh, uh, Megan, better, better, doesn't it? <laughs> Megan Ward, and uh, also having uh, uh, Robin Tunney is also makes pro shows up in Michael DeLuise, uh, and also um, Rose McGowan's very first movie. She shows up as like a oh yeah she's there for like a second or something right she has like yeah. a line she, yeah she's like in the background a little bit yeah and she has like one line or so Rich, Richard Mazur as the the dad and also uh um I always pronounce his name wrong the uh, uh the guy who got nominated this year uh who was in the Goonies and uh, uh, oh yeah and, uh, yeah uh, yes uh, that was him wasn't it um yes yeah. I've forgotten how what his name is yeah, I, I can I I don't want to mispronounce his name but anyway. He was in this movie, which I, I thought was actually kind of... Well, why uh, don't you mispronounce it? Because it's better than not pronouncing it at all, right? So Right. Uh, let me just look it up so I remember even what it's like. Uh, K, or anyway, he goes by Jonathan Kwan, I think, in this movie. Uh, I think right, well, you got an out to, to get it wrong then. Cause... Oh, yeah, but I think he was by K, K. Hugh Kwan. Maybe right, maybe, sounds maybe, about right. Yeah, something like that. Right. So I, I I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing. But I mean, I thought that was kind of serendipitous that uh, I chose this movie at this particular month because both K. Hugh Kwan and Brendan Fraser, uh, so of course went through kind of periods where they were very successful, usually in the 80s and 90s, and then both of them went through very long periods of, uh, of, uh, 
not being able to get get work and they kind of went through like really big issues and stuff like that and yet both of them nominated for best actor at the oscars this year um both right brendan frazier and katie Kwan. right so, so so it's kind of interesting that they just happen to be in this movie together and then actually uh here it is you know 20 uh what 21 years later or, or 31 years later uh he's uh yeah they're both nominated so 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 what are because i was wondering about this today because i happened to listen to Brendan mm-hmm. Fraser in an interview, um, okay, talking about the whale, and uh, uh-huh. obviously he's um, well, he's bigger than he was, but but the way he looks in the whale is is actually a suit he's wearing, right? Right. It's, yes. It's yeah, not, yeah. But, but he is. But he is. He is. He is quite large guy now. It's yeah. Right. But 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 also, um, his voice sounds like he's. Um, yeah. I, I believe he had some kind of some kind of health issues. Uh, right. I'm not sure exactly. I, I think that led to his weight gain and to his uh, lack of uh, like sort of taking time off. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, health issues were. Mm. Um, I mean, I probably should have done some research for it, but uh, um, no, no. I was just wondering if you uh, knew just uh, because I, I, he clearly didn't sound uh, well. But I, 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 yeah, I wasn't exactly sure what was. Uh, I suppose it's none of our business, really. But uh, I was just curious uh, if you knew. Right. No, I, I don't know specifically, but I, I do know that, you know, he it made him whatever gain a lot of weight. Um, and uh, and also like he he was on uh, recently on a, a show called Doom Patrol, which was a DC. Uh, show oh, yes. He, he played uh, like a uh, robot, robot man. I, I can't remember the name of the character, but anyway, where he's basically just the voice. Right. So he's so he's hmm. able to do to work more kind of voice stuff these days. So but uh, yeah, I think he's. Yeah. So anyway, he did have some some kind of health issue which led to his weight gain and a lack of acting but interestingly both of them uh made a comeback this year right at the exact same time and they both are in this movie i know you and, do your uh, annual oscar watch around this time of mm-hmm. have you actually watched the whale i haven't been able to find a copy of the whale yet but it's it will be on it's on my to watch list whenever okay. i can get it so Great. yeah so but i did I'm watch not... everything everywhere all at once though yeah i i might well i might see that so i'm i'm not um, you know, I, I'll I'll uh, make my own, but I, I, there's probably not a chance in hell I'm watching the whale. So, oh really? Why is that? Oh, <laughs> just just I don't really know much about it. It's just about a fat guy, right? Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, well, why, what? But what about that makes you not want to watch it? Oh uh, well, there's I, I I mean I do quite like Darren Aronofsky's films sometimes, but um, mm-hmm. no, I I haven't. It just doesn't look. Uh, in the slightest bit interesting, it looks very mawkish and um, and oh. sentimental and give me an Oscar, please. Uh, oh, really? Okay, Oscar I actually please. haven't seen any of the trailers, or I don't really know anything about it other than that he plays like a, a really overweight guy, so I don't really know what to, what much hmm. about it. So, okay, yeah. anyway, um, well, that's why I'm interested to see if I mean, you know, you never know, you might actually, yeah, well, I'll give you, it a shot like, you I... must see the whale, you know, whenever I find it, I'll give it a, a look and I'll let you know what you think, hmm. but of course. Not that we have the same taste in movies, anyway. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, but I think yeah. you kind of you you would know whether I would find something worthwhile, right. regardless right, right, right. of what you thought, right? So right, right, right. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Anyway, this was a. Uh, uh, it could be a future. Um. I hate you, man's special, actually. Yeah. It could be. Could be. Could be. Uh, I. I. I doubt you hate it that much. I think. But. Uh, um. But anyway. Uh. Yes. Yeah, so it's uh written by uh Sean Sheps. I guess mm. or, and that comedy too. genius John Sheps. <laughs> Do you know him? <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, anyway, uh, and uh, did you actually and, say uh, the title of the film yet? Yes, I did. I said Encino Man. Yeah, I did. Okay, say. okay. Yeah. Or California and, Man, as it was known in the UK. Or California, because is no that, one knows what? where Encino. Yeah, Encino. Is. Yeah. How about in uh, in Japan? What was it known as here? That's a good question. I didn't look it up actually. Um. Caveman or something. Cave, like. Yeah. Maybe. Cave, unfrozen caveman or something. I don't know. I'll have a look uh, while you. Chat. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll ramble while you look. Uh, it's directed by Les Mayfield as well. Uh, Les Mayfield, uh, known for other stuff. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anyway, this was a uh, early '90s. This sort of uh, um, Sean Astin was kind of hot. You know, he was hot. Those types of things. Fred Frazier was uh was was uh like a big hot uh guy at that time, right? So he, I don't know what he had been doing for this, but um um he was kind of hot and kind of wanted. This is oh yeah, he just done uh 
school ties, I believe, school ties. And uh, yeah, so he was sort of an up and coming guy. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and Pauly Shore uh, came in as, I guess, Pauly Shore was sort of, uh, I don't, Pauly Shore is one of those real, he's, he's a real, I wanted to do more research on Pauly Shore just because uh, Pauly Shore is sort of like one of the, he, he seems like almost like a, like a YouTube celebrity before YouTube. He's like, he's like in the current modern age, there's all these people that are famous, but you don't know why they're famous. Mm. Pauly Shore seems like one of those people that you're like, he became famous, but you don't know how or why or what for. And when I was researching this film, uh, a lot of people saying like, oh yeah, well, uh, this person didn't know who Pauly Shore was and this person didn't know who Pauly Shore was. But yeah, so and, like nobody seemed to know who he was, but he sort of like was famous to certain people for well, I guess it's because his 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 parents ran the comedy store, right? So oh, okay, right, okay. I'm okay. I'm wondering if there's a certain amount of people knew him from hanging hanging around the comedy store uh, and um, nepotism. Why I I mean to be as much as I would love to rag on Pauly Show as much as possible. Um, I don't actually know if he was unfairly promoted or if he uh, or if he got you know uh, got to where he was under his own. Kind of steam, right. I don't know. Um, right, right. Kenshino man, apparently in Japan, uh, which translates as primitive man. Oh, okay. Which sounds similar to en Encino, I guess, right? So maybe that's why there was a maybe a pun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, this the the um, this uh, story is it's, it's pretty simple to explain. You know, these uh, uh, two kind of losers are in a pool in their in one of their backyard to try to uh uh because they want to make a pool for prom so that they can kind of be be popular and uh while they're digging they come across a uh frozen caveman uh there's been an earthquake as well isn't there so that yeah. might have loosened something or you know right yeah yeah i guess yeah. Yeah. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, as they're digging and and uh, quaking, they find this frozen caveman. They take him out, and uh, uh, he thaws out, and he becomes he thaws into Brendan Fraser. And then they sort of do a fish out of water story where they sort of mm. um, he becomes rather than being this kind of like uh, you know scared and and kind of trying to teach him the ways of the modern world, he just becomes this sort of like lovable mute guy who sort of is really kind of goofy and then they you know become popular because of him and uh yeah and then he he sort of becomes popular and uh even despite the fact that he's a caveman he can't speak and uh but he's very kind of like um charismatic and mm. his well, physicality i guess me, to be and fair he's, he's, yeah. hot, he's hot right so and uh yeah and so then they become popular and uh that's the end yeah it's just sort of uh there's not much more to it it's just sort of hijinks of having a caveman around right so coincidentally uh, what few people know is actually me and ron first met when we th thought out a caveman and and uh, he made us popular uh yeah and that's when right. we went to the prom and uh all yeah. that so it's, yeah. it's and he, i had no yeah, idea his name his name was wood which is why we we called this his podcast that's, that's right. one, yeah. um yeah, so. the other thing um uh, what was I going to say now? Fuck, that's annoying, isn't it, when that happens? Especially when you interrupt someone else to say something and then yeah, don't and, have anything and, to say. Especially when people are listening on a podcast. It's good podcasting. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was it? Hang on, let me backtrack. Uh, earthquake. Uh, uh, Brendan Fraser. Brendan uh, uh, losers. Thawing out. Uh, popularity. No, it's not coming to me. Um, it'll come back at some point. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I, it, it's just, uh, I mean, this, I, I have, uh, I, you know, I, actually, I don't think I've seen this movie in 30 years since it probably came out. I think I've seen it once or twice when it first came out, but I still had uh, a lot of sort of uh, um, positive memories of this movie. And I know definitely uh, back in the day, I was definitely, definitely, definitely in love with Megan Ward. At the time. She was definitely my type back in the day. Hmm. Oh, um, yeah. We've, we've yeah. spoken to uh, her before we did Freaked. Yeah. I remember what the other thing was I was going to say is that um, we have, of course, done Brendan Fraser as Fish Out of Water from the Past before in yes, Blast from yeah. the Past, right? Uh, in Blast from the Past, yes. Very similar. And he, al and he also did uh, another one, I guess George of the Jungle was also quite similar as well, right? So he was the same kind of Fish Out of Water. Watch out of for that tree. Yeah, yeah. So watch out for yeah. that tree. Yeah. So he, I think they called this his, he has like a trilogy of sort of dumb guy, Fish Out of Water. To be fair, he's <laughs> quite good at doing yeah. that. Um, yeah, and, and sort of like the 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 hot but doesn't know he's hot kind of thing I think is it, it, yeah it's, apparently it's, it's he has a, a name he has a genre, around, right in like um like uh, 
uh, mime and things like that, right? And um, uh -huh. which is you know, automatically a reason to take against someone. But I actually quite, I've always quite liked um, Brendan Fraser. Brendan. I think Brendan Fraser good. is, yeah, I mean, Brendan Fraser is, he's, he's got great charisma. I mean, that's why yeah. he became a big movie star. He's very charismatic. He's real, like, fun to watch. I mean, he's definitely got, he's got, He's really got a uh, very strong physicality. I mean, he's yeah. despite the fact that he's sort of like a buff guy, he has very you know good control over his you know his uh, physical comedy and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's, he's got a lunk and he's got good comic yeah. timing. Yeah, he's got timing. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, he's, so, he's I mean, definitely the best thing. Uh, well, apart from looking at Megan Ward, but um, yeah, <laughs> this is definitely the best thing about this film by a a country mile. I, yeah, think. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, I I I. I it's it's I think it would be rare to find someone that that hates Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser is just such a likable guy. I think people generally. You know, oh no, I've that. heard oddly enough he is one. Oh really? Somebody, yeah, there's there's there, there's a certain type of person who really dislike. In the same way as I don't really quite understand, even though maybe some of the film, I don't really understand people who were uh, um out and out hit um uh your man uh uh punch and glove guy um. Oh, Adam Sandler. Yeah, like a lot of people really hit, uh, and uh, I yeah. Yeah, 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 I know that yeah. either. Uh, yeah. Um, but I mean, Adam Sandler has a very particular style of comedy that uh, you either love it or hate it. I think, right? So, but uh, I find Brendan Fraser is just sort of like he's just a likable kind of guy, and he's sort of like you know. So I don't know. I, anyway, I turned it. It's called a Himbo trilogy. Uh, yeah, his 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 fans uh, call it a, a Himbo trilogy, which is the hunky, dumb, nice guy who's unaware that he's hot. Right, uh, in him which and is Bit this Boy, one, George yes. of the Jungle, and Bless in the Past. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I can't really figure out why you hate this movie so much. I mean, it, it's just sort of a it. It's a very kind of like, um, unoffensive, mild comedy, right? I mean, it was. I, I, I smiled all the way through it. It was sort of gave me lots of nostalgia, and it was just. I mean, it's not hilariously funny, but it's it's just. Uh, no, I mean. Um, Sean Astin is, he apparently didn't want to do this movie and you can kind of tell he seems kind of, seems yeah. really phoning it in quite a bit, but I think they didn't really give him too much to do with his character. He's sort of like the straight guy. Uh, so he, you know, did, doesn't really do that much. Polly Shore is just sort of Polly Shore, you know, I mean, uh, as I was, I was mentioning about Polly Shore is that I don't really know why he's famous, but he became the sort of like, you know, he, he became so famous in the nineties, you know, with this one, he had a, a whole bunch, a bunch of movies like uh, Biodome and uh, Son-in-Law and uh, Jury Duty. He had like a bunch of them where it was like classic oh, soul. Probably... Yeah, plus uh, I think that definitely are going to be my uh, my, my next. <laughs> that what you're going to do from now on is just... I'm, I'm just going to do Polly Shore movies every year. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean he's, I mean, and he, I mean Polly Shore is. It, it's really interesting watching Polly Shore these days because I mean no one really sees Polly Shore anymore. I don't know what he's up to these days, but you know he's. He was so popular in the '90s, right? And uh, it's just, it's, 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 it's sort of like a looking at a fossil. It's looking like looking at a fossil. Like, oh, what, what, what was it about this guy that sort of captured people's attention back in the '90s? Like this sort of. Well, I don't you know, think I mean, anyone. I don't think anyone with good taste ever thought he was funny, right? Yeah. But, well, I think he was. He was meant to be kind of like one of those low, kind of lowbrow co comedians and stuff yeah. like you know, like you know, um, yeah, like well, easy, well, actually, easy he definitely has like like listening to him. I mean, he, he basically speaks another language. Like I, I couldn't even understand what he was saying most of the time. So well, what's interesting about his his thing here? Well, I, I, I use the phrase interesting loosely, but but you know, I was grasping at straws, <laughs> right, to find something. I I'm I'm not sure if it is the typical Polish shock because my in my memories and I didn't really seek him out, but when I did accidentally see Polish show films, I got the feeling he was a little bit more um like. A little bit more raunchy, maybe, or a little bit more slash, or a little bit kind of. But the the thing he's doing here is this kind of low key, like stoner guy. And to be honest, I've no idea what he's. I wrote it down. What is Polish Shaw doing? Because I don't. Because <laughs> he's not really a stoner. You never see him. No, no. Up or anything no, like. No, that. no, no. So, but he's. he's I, I think he's, he's meant to be stony, and and he's yeah. clearly supposed to be in that. I'm, they might have delivered the original script might have had him smoking bomb and they cut it out to get the rating or something. But but he's he's not quite a stoner and then he's not he's not like the the you know the the super horny best friend who's always getting Sean Austin into trouble and he's not he, like he doesn't 
he's he's like in some weird liminal space where they all overlap just a little bit. Hmm. But it's well, like, I think that's kind of interesting that they that they they kind of went outside the box. Well, I mean, I don't think they did and, deliberately. I think they just well, no, no, no. Well, I think I think really was uh, well. What I heard when doing my research on this is that apparently Polly Shore was originally up for the Link character, the, the caveman. Okay. Apparently, and and so then, but apparently he didn't want to do that because his he felt his comedy is more through his kind of poly speak. He calls it like the way he speaks and stuff. And so because the Link character doesn't really speak, uh, he thought that he would wasn't so he uh, kind of asked for the 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 friend character. And apparently the friend character was just another kind of bland loser kid that was kind of like. Um, uh, he and uh, what's a uh, uh, Dave? The the two of the Sony and Dave were just sort of like bland loser characters yeah. that didn't really have much character. Yeah. So I think they just they said, okay, Polly, you do that, and then they just let Polly improvise and then just be Polly. So I think he's really just being himself mostly, which is sort of this kind of outsider kind of weirdo guy. And and you can see like as he undressed with other people, he has he's also sort of um, unaware of how kind of weird he is and, and popular he keeps on like what, what are you talking about i'm popular so and he then he got walks around and says like these hello little one like he's like this is like really weird things to people and people are like so really the character kind of went on the long circuitous route from bland to bland that's interesting <laughs> this ended well, up is it, bland is it again. different kind of bland right it's a, it became bland, but like a I, I mean, I definitely bland. think it's more interesting than just another another Dave, right? Because if it was I just two Dave, it would have been really boring, doing. I think, right? So, I couldn't figure out what he was doing at all. Like, you know, yeah. usually when something isn't funny, you can kind of figure out how it's not funny and how they're aiming to be yeah. funny. But I don't even know what he's trying to do. Like, yeah. is, uh, well, obviously you like the film more than me, but 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 did you find him funny did you find the things he did funny? not 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 in 2023 uh but i think in 93 or 92, found him funny. i think I, I i think he was but i think he was also i mean he he hadn't really become holly shore yet he hadn't done his movie i think he this was the movie that sort of made him and then he I became remember it that way, yeah. so so i think he was sort of uh kind of he was still finding his voice or his sort of personality or his persona i think which may have been Kind of developed and stand up and at the comedy store, but I think he was, he, he, as I said, they they gave him this character and said just improvise most of it and do whatever. So I think he was just sort of making it up as he goes along. And apparently he and um and John Aston, John Aston didn't really didn't really like each other that much. So I think it was kind of like a weird kind of set vibe. It seemed like Sean didn't really want to be there. So I got the feeling that they were just kind of Sean Aston out as been my estimation during this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's, it's it's an odd one because it's like it's because the polish or whatever he does, it's the, the, the it's not like it's not like puns or anything like that. He's not punning on anything, and he it it's not like really kind of like clever, like a like a beat mm -hmm. poetry or witty, like yeah, that. yeah. And he is not witty, and he's not referring to. There's no like references. It's not blue. It's not. No, yeah, it's, not so it's, it's nothing. It's just. <laughs> Stop fucking talking like that, you fucking. <laughs> yes, it is. It's just the, the as he calls it, the poly speak, which is sort of like the, uh, um, you know, doing big pauses in the middle of words and then just choosing kind of like slang that nobody really knows what it means and so that. Which is, I guess, that was where the comedy came from. Which is that people were like, <laughs> "What is this guy talking about?" <laughs> really, I guess. Uh, it's and, weird. And I think it. And the I think 90s, it lasted for a few years in the nineties, and then people got tired of it, and that's why nineties, the nineties, kind of like it. that. The nine, I think the nineties, you were there was the, there was a brief period of time where people confused annoying with funny, right? Like it was that thing mm. of just being a bit annoying. Like um, mm. the, the Freddy got fingered guy. Um, oh yeah, is the same, it's different, but same category of like nothing witty or funny at all. Just, just annoying, and somehow. For a certain demographic, a certain generation, that for some reason passed as comedy, which I I always found um, kind of weird. Well, Tom, Tom Green was a, a, a whole other thing, right? So Tom Green was was Canadian, and he actually came from a Canadian comedy show, which was called the Tom Green Show, where he did he was kind of like a Canadian jackass, where he would do like really stupid shit and stuff, and so that and that's where he came from, right? So that that was a little bit of a different. Yeah, I don't know if I was doing Jackass a bit of a disservice, though, right? Because Jackass. Well, he, he was he was the Canadian Jackass, which you know it's just you know the the paler comparison, which is. Did he do dangerous, dangerous stunts and things as well then? Because not I... dangerous, but he, I mean, I remember watching the Tom Green show when I was in high school, and he did a thing where he would 
he would pick up his own shit and then and then eat his own shit too. Like he tasted his own shit, you know, stuff like that. Like he do, you know, just stupid shit like that, right? He was just an idiot, right? So, but he he was popular enough to marry Drew Barrymore for, for a short amount of time, right? So yeah, but yeah. Drew Barrymore was married like half of the population of the United States, right? Because I'm right <laughs> sorry, Drew. <laughs> she has, she's married like 25,000 times or something. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So th- anyway, th- that's that's that. So I think Pauly Shore is just, he was, I think he was really much, I mean, uh, whether or not you think he was annoying or if you think it may have been uh, confusing, annoying with funny or confusing, just sort of something different. I think also, remember, this is the early 90s and they're coming off of like John Hughes movies and you know, uh, lots of, I mean, I find that sometimes you can think that maybe a lot of the 80s movies are all kind of, were kind of repeating themselves. And I think he was something different. I think they were just, they thought at the time he was kind of maybe a bit thought to be refreshing or something interesting, different. But uh, yeah, I think that did last long, right? So it lasted only a few years. Mm. But, but yeah, I, I agree. I mean, he wasn't particularly funny. He was just sort of like a, kind of a, a head scratching, like, oh, this is an interesting choice, but definitely made it, if it was just two Sean Astons, it would this movie would have been a lot more forgettable. I think Pauly Shore, as annoying and kind of unfunny as he is, made it a memorable movie. I think right. So I think that's what he, it's his presence actually makes it different than other movies of its ilk. I think so. Hmm. Do you think so? Anyway, so no. yeah. I mean, if I were to go with the positives, um. Uh, yeah. I mean, I will say this. I was surprised that this film didn't actually actively irritate me as I as much as I thought it would. I was I was waiting for an email of some court like a fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, or something. No, but, no, no, and, no, again, because... so I like, and I was watching. I was like, I, I mean, I can it's see not... why this is not a particularly great movie, but I can't see why people would hate this movie. There's nothing really to actively hate about it. It's right, just right, the... it's not irritating. I'll give it that. It's yeah. it's just it's bland and unfunny and boring and and just all those things. But there is, and considering Pauly Shaw is in it, it's kind of a miracle that it's not doesn't it's not annoying. It's irritating, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's just it's just plays out, and I never laughed. I didn't. I don't think I even smiled. Um, but I wasn't actively annoyed, which is oh, okay. Saying something, saying something, okay. And Megan Ward was there. Yeah, yeah. Um, she she actually is. Um, she's uh, of course with her terrible eighties hair though, but uh, but uh, she's a lot uh, less of a good actress than I remember. <laughs> like she's actually pretty terrible. We were like watching a couple of scenes. I was like, oh, she's actually like a really bad actress, but <laughs> at least in this she, movie. But uh, yeah, she doesn't, doesn't have that much to do. Really. She doesn't have much to do, right? Yes. So and um, yeah, and definitely there's like a real silly uh, kind of uh, very confusing kind of. Uh, um, uh, resolution at the end where suddenly she ends up with with uh, Sean Astin's character where they've had no <laughs> chemistry whatsoever. She said several times, no, I'm not interested in you. No, I'm not interested in you. No, I'm not interested in you. Okay. And then they kiss in the end. <laughs> so, so, so it's such like a hack on ending. Right? It's like, so. Yeah, well, it's it's everything about the film is prefabricated, right? And it's just, mm, right. you know exactly where it's going, obviously. And uh-huh. at no point does it derail yeah. your no, it doesn't. Um, yeah. expectations. Yeah, and it, and at no point, I mean, of course, there's so much more they could have done in terms of like the, um, like the, this caveman doesn't know anything about 20th century, right, kind of thing, you know, so, I mean, it reminded yeah. me of like, I've actually done two different kid shows, uh, one where I played a scarecrow, and the other one where I played an alien, which were basically the same premise, which is that, you know, I've just come to life, or I've just come down to earth, and I don't know anything about about uh, about Earth or or your ways. <laughs> so then, and then the the people in the in the um, in the other movie, the regular, the straight people, just sort of teach you, you know, through to great comic effect, you know, teach you about how to be a person, right? So it's so it's just like a, I mean, the 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 formula has been done, you know, thousands yeah. of times, I guess, right? So, but it's uh, I think that's the thing is is it's. I wouldn't necessarily. I, I'd get on with this kind of thing a, a bit, but it has to have like a, a certain internal logic, right? And so, for instance, the family are way too quick to accept him into their house and yeah. uh, guys of his, his exchange. Don't you remember that we were going to have yeah. a, a yeah, a, and that's a, it. And it's a like, exchange oh. student, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay, I guess so. Yeah, and the okay. amount of times they've fucking trashed. 
the house and <laughs> no one really seems to care. just stuff yeah. like that there's always like um yeah, well. kind of annoyed me you know because yeah, yeah. You, you want to see just little yeah you just just a lewd... real reactions to things right yeah 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 okay. but it just yeah. It, it yeah so nothing makes any sense connected to anything else or mm. and, it, and it's not it's 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 very sloppily written right so for instance when he's going to do the big reveal that he, you know he's found out he's a caveman and he's going to announce it at the prom or something now mm -hmm. like, you know if they'd have like sat down and tried to figure out like how could we have him make the reveal right but then uh, initially maybe the crowd goes what he's okay but then something happens so it makes being a caveman be cool or something like that. but it's not it's just after they put in all that effort to steal the photos and oh no quick we got to go run to the prom and so they don't announce it he's just he's a caveman and everyone just goes cool <laughs> oh, oh is that it? like they, yeah. they, it's very lazy isn't it it's yeah, like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i guess like uh i was reading i guess about this one one of the reasons sean asin didn't want to do it because he thought the script was quite terrible uh, and uh, that uh, he, he didn't want to do it because he, he wanted like uh, he wanted to help to pr improve the, uh, the the script. But uh, I guess uh, the Disney is a Disney movie, right? So Disney chairman uh, Jeffrey Katzenberger, Katzenberg at the time, mm. he just thought it was going to make a lot of money. So that's all he really cared about. He didn't really care about uh, fixing the script or anything. But uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, I I I'd, I'd love to see a reboot of this. I think they could. I think this is. It's still a a. a Time tested formula, you know, of the fish out of water. That uh, I think they could they could do something interesting with this if they reboot with it. So, anyway, can you can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> did you? No, no, did I was, you oh, okay, you got silent. So I thought maybe I I, I was contemplating the <laughs> NC No Man remake. Um, but no, I know what you're saying. But it's, apparently they they've it's all so... they've all expressed interest in doing a re uh, uh, a sequel actually uh, oh, thirty it. years later, right? I, I mean that would look like, but. I mean, it is. I mean, like you said, you only. It is such a kind of. You don't even have to specifically reboot as an in no man. You 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 can do right. it a million different ways, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm surprised they, they they didn't get it like a sequel like the next year or something because I mean they they kind of finished on a cliffhanger with his girlfriend also being unfrozen, which kind of came out of nowhere. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so then yes. so suddenly there, there's there was a girl there, so they I figured that they I thought they were they, definitely going to do more of that. They, but they uh, dress her up in in horrible '90s clothes like the one he's got on, right? Like oh geez, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the fashions. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's <laughs> talking about the '80s, but they forget really about the early '90s. 90s. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. was I was like high school. This is like my high school right here. Like I could like <laughs> I could I it was like kind of traumatic flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. early 90s fashion so but it's uh anyway it was uh i i had a fun watch it was i had fun i i could i i was i'm i'm nice to, i'm glad to hear that you weren't offended or insulted by it anymore but uh that it's uh it was just sort of bland which is okay i think i can live with that y yes yes so it wasn't quite it seemed at first like like it could be a yeah. fatal wound but it was just yeah. a just a yeah, just a flesh wound. It was just a, just a glance, just a flesh wound. Yeah. Are you or, or are you is a, like a real flesh wound or like a a black knight flesh wound? No, I suppose more like a like a a dueling scar across the cheek. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. All right. Well. Which you know so, we're all the rage so back in the day. I've, I've drawn all... first blood, so now we'll ah. uh, now we'll let's parry. Let's do it after we jump off and on again. <laughs>